Today we're in Yosemite National Park's Hetch Hetchy Valley, which I know the title of this video says Secret Yosemite. It's not really a secret as it's listed on all the maps. However, it's a secret in the fact that less than 1% of all visitors to Yosemite National Park come to Hetch Hetchy according to the National Park Service. So this is our guide to Yosemite's Secret Valley. Hetch Hetchy is located in Yosemite National Park's northwest corner, 38 miles from Yosemite Valley. The most prominent feature in the valley is the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, which is the main source of water for the city of San Francisco. But before the valley was flooded in 1923 with the building of the O'Shaughnessy Dam, it was a place that John Muir considered of equal beauty to Yosemite Valley. It's said that the passing of the legislation to build the dam broke John Muir's heart. Unlike the rest of Yosemite National Park, there is no camping, aside from backpacker camping, or lodging in the Hetch Hetchy Valley, though right outside of the park you can find plenty of campsites and a couple of lodges. Another huge difference between Hetch Hetchy and the rest of Yosemite National Park is you do not need a reservation to get in. You do still have to pay an entrance fee, and the road into Hetch Hetchy is only open from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Once you enter the park, it's not long before you start descending into the Hetch Hetchy Valley. But before you reach the valley, you can find the trailheads to Smith Peak, which will take you to the highest point in the area, or the Pupinot Trail, which will take you on a strenuous two and a half mile round trip hike to the Tuolumne River. And it also doesn't take long after entering the park to start getting amazing views of the Hetch Hetchy Valley from the road. Once you reach the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, you can find a fairly large parking area right next to the O'Shaughnessy Dam. If you've ever been to Yosemite Valley, another thing that you'll find amazing at Hetch Hetchy is the amount of parking that is available. This was filmed about 9 a.m. on a weekend. From the parking area at the O'Shaughnessy Dam, you start to get amazing views of the Hetch Hetchy Valley and of course the dam itself, which appears massive in person. From there, you can walk out onto the O'Shaughnessy Dam, which is a must-do if you visit Hetch Hetchy. From on top of the dam, you can really get an appreciation of how high up you are. And of course there are amazing views to the west and to the east. In 1906, a devastating earthquake destroyed much of San Francisco's infrastructure. The city desperately needed water and power, and Hetch Hetchy Valley, with its two steep granite walls that meet in a narrow V, was perfect for anchoring a dam. In 1913, President Woodrow Wilson approved construction of the dam and despite environmentalists such as John Muir and the Sierra Club fighting to stop it, in 1923, the Hetch Hetchy Valley was buried under more than 300 feet of water. There have been efforts over the years to remove the dam and restore the valley, but those have gained little traction. One positive thing that did come from the building of the dam is the fight over it did help lead to the creation of the National Park Service in 1916. On top of the dam, there are informational signs on the Hetch Hetchy Valley and the history of the dam, as well as some historical plaques. Then on the opposite side of the dam, you'll find a tunnel, which leads to what we think is the number one thing to do in the Hetch Hetchy Valley, and that's the hike to Wapama Falls. Using the tunnel to hike through the mountain is pretty neat. It can get a little wet inside the tunnel, though it is well lit. And even if the lights did go out, the tunnel is straight, and you can clearly see the other side of it. Then of course on the other side of the tunnel, there are more breathtaking views of Hetch Hetchy. This is also where you will find the Hetch Hetchy Trailhead. If you can only do one hike in Hetch Hetchy, we definitely recommend the hike to Wapama Falls. It's 2.7 miles out and 2.7 miles back, making it a total of a 5.4 mile hike. Now we are by no means hardcore backpackers or hikers, and we would rate the trail as moderate difficulty. There is some elevation gain and loss, and the trail does go over a variety of terrain, including some rocky paths. But overall, it's nothing too strenuous, and our eight-year-old son was able to make it with no problems. There are quite a few beautiful waterfalls in Yosemite, though I think Wapama is our favorite to hike to, because you can get right up close and personal to it, as you'll see in just a few minutes. 
On the way to Wapama Falls, you also visit Tuilala Falls. And if you come in the springtime, you can also see some other small seasonal waterfalls as well, like this one. The trail to Wapama Falls is well signed, and if you want something a little bit more extreme, you can hike all the way to Yosemite Valley, which is a 47.5 mile hike. The trail circumnavigates the reservoir the entire way, so it's easy to see how far you've gone and how far you have left to go, and you're constantly treated to stunning views of the Hetch Hetchy Valley and the reservoir. After about two miles, you come to Tuilala Falls which some people consider a Jekyll and Hyde waterfall because when it's flowing it's supposedly pretty magnificent though the rest of the time it looks like it did on our visit with very little water flow. We were told there's about a two month window every year where it has a really good flow and then the rest of the time it looks a lot like it did on our visit. But here's a picture of what it can look like. And of course more stunning views from the Tuilala Falls area when you look out at the valley, you can't help but think of what it would look like without the reservoir there. If you come to Hetch Hetchy during the springtime, it is very colorful due to all the flowers in bloom. Hetch Hetchy is at a lower elevation than the rest of Yosemite, so the hiking season is longer in the Hetch Hetchy Valley, though that also means in the summertime it does get hotter in Hetch Hetchy than it does in the rest of the park. As you get closer to Wapama Falls, you can really start to hear it as you approach it. And it's not long before you see Wapama Falls. When you get to the bottom of the waterfall, there is a footbridge that crosses right in front of it where you are guaranteed to get wet. The water really flows over the first part of the bridge and there are signs warning you to cross at your own risk. There are times when the bridge is pretty much impassable. But lucky for us the water wasn't flowing too bad on our visit and we had no problem crossing. It was really neat to be able to get that close to the waterfall and the mist was actually really refreshing after the hike. You can occasionally see water going over the bridge and you can just imagine what it would be like with a lot more flow to the waterfall and how crazy it would be with water constantly going over the bridge. The second bridge is where things got really crazy as we got absolutely soaked and this water was ice cold. It wasn't refreshing like the mist at all, it was freezing. It was a lot like that ice bucket challenge that was popular a few years ago. So once we got to the other side, we could lay against the rocks which had been heated by the sun in order to warm back up and help us dry off. And of course, there were great views of the waterfall as well. You can continue down the trail past Wapama Falls, and about another four miles down you'll come across Rancheria Falls, though most people do turn around at Wapama Falls and head back, which is what we did on this trip. And since it's an out and back hike, you can get the same great views you had on the hike out by just turning around and looking back. While Hetch Hetchy doesn't have the infrastructure that the rest of the national park does, with no museums, shops, lodges, or campgrounds, and only a few hiking trails compared to the rest of Yosemite, it is a great way to spend a day in the national park, especially if you want to get away from the crowds you'll find in the rest of Yosemite. We definitely recommend visiting Hetch Hetchy if you get the chance. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.